the reason the broadcast was turned off is my battery is low and automatically turns it off. So now I have to title this as part two. And part two means basically we're finished. Our hour is almost up. No, it's on. We're doing part two. So, of course, this idea of, of impersonalism or taking impersonalism seriously, I don't, I don't really find it happening much in the West. I mean, it happens in the West in, in ways which are not traditional as they are in the East, but traditionally in, in my, amongst Mayavadis, Mayavadis know that they're Mayavadis, they're trying to be Mayavadis, they're, they're determined, their, their effort is to merge in Brahman. And they will look at us as devotees and think, well, there's something wrong with us or something's missing because we're not detached and we're still hearing and chanting. So their, their idea is hearing and chanting is just to get you to a position where you can give it up. So those are the people that Prabhupada is talking about. As far as the Mayavadis in the West, or a lot of yogis and impersonalists, they're not, I don't find them really, most of them really traditional or bona fide Mayavadis. Of, of course, I, I don't want to underestimate the power of their impersonalism. But I do want to un underestimate the power of their practice as it's compared to the practice of real Mayavadis who are, who are conscious of what they're trying to do, whose goal is to merge in Brahman. I think the goal of most spiritualists is just to be blissful and feel good. And that if we can come along with something better, many of them will take it up. And later on they'll realize that they were impersonalists. But uh, Apaka, diehard Mart of Mayavadis, it's rare. They become devotees, and when they do become devotees, they're so contaminated by Mayavad philosophy that it's difficult for them. In fact, one real, genuine Indian Mayavad joined the temple in Los Angeles. And he was so contaminated with Mayavad, as I'm saying, because he was a real Mayavadi philosophy that Prabhupada forbid him to preach. So for one year, you first study my books. I don't think he stayed, but, but that's the contamination of Mayavad. It, it goes very deep. Like we are deeply materially conditioned and they're deeply materially conditioned by Mayavad philosophy. So, Prabhupada therefore addresses Mayavadis. He addresses them often in his books because it's a real, it's uh, destructive. You, it's... The point is that you renounce and then you get caught again. You know, like you give up the material world. You're on the cusp or the verge of transcendence and then you get trapped by Maya in a spiritual way. So Maya is everywhere, even for those practice, practicing spiritual life, that she's there. Interesting, isn't it? You can come to a point of some realization. You realize you're not the body. You realize the temporary nature of the material world. You begin a spiritual practice, and that spiritual practice becomes the cause of further entanglement in the material world. So it's not easy to get out of the material world. And so the point, as I said earlier, of this verse is to show that when you're attracted to hearing and chanting, it doesn't mean that you're still within the modes of material nature, as my bodies may think, but it means that you're actually in Krishna consciousness. Ruchi is a sign of advancement. So when you advance in Krishna consciousness, you're always going to be attracted to hearing and chanting. Just like when you love someone, you'll always be attracted to hearing about them and chanting about them. So even as I was saying, you're not intellectual. You may not be an intellectual, but as you advance in Krishna consciousness, Sim the symptom is that you'll like to hear about Krishna, you'll like to hear about the devotees. 
you like to talk about them. That, you, we can't use this excuse, I'm not intellectual, I don't like to read, I like to be active. Okay, that's true to some degree, but just try to understand, you're going to speak and you're going to listen. That's just you have ears and you have a tongue. So, so that's what we do. We, 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 we're, you're going to talk to people about something. So as you become Krishna conscious, you're talking is going to be Krishna conscious because you're attracted to Krishna and that's what interests you and that's what you want to talk about and that's what is going to inspire you and enliven you. And other kata, other topics will just bore you and frustrate you and make you feel miserable. So that's the idea. So at least understand that clearly. It's, it's okay if you're not a philosopher and you don't like to go deeply into philosophy or it's okay maybe you're not particularly attracted to learning Sanskrit and shlokas like that. But to not be attracted to hearing about Krishna is not a good sign. It's a sign, especially the verses we're reading here, it's saying basically hearing and chanting is the panacea. So it's something that if you do daily, you'll find it to be uh, insulating against the modes of nature. That's one effect, but, but the real effect is that it awakens your love for Krishna. Gradually, gradually awakens your attraction for Krishna. So hearing is one of the most powerful ways of awakening your attraction for Krishna. And that's why we're supposed to do it every day as much as possible, whenever we have time. Just hear, hear, read, study, listen to lectures. Whatever, whatever you can do to engage yourself, then do it. Okay? So we're going to end here. We've gone one hour. Well, we've probably gone 59 minutes. But that's close enough. Thank you for listening. And tomorrow, I don't know if I'll be giving class. No, tomorrow I'll be on a train at this time. Maybe we can give class on the train. We'll have to see. Anything's possible. Okay, thank you for listening. Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai.